Hey everyone, so in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw and paint hair or basically my way of doing it because I've had quite a lot of people request I show my method of doing it because I've kind of changed it from the last time I did a tutorial on this. So just so you guys know, I'm going to be using Paint Tool Sci for this. Um, the faces that I've drawn here are part of my skin and eyes tutorial so if that is something that you want to find out about how I paint skin and eyes then make sure you click on the video it will be in the cards or linked in the description below but yeah if you are only here to learn how to draw hair um, then you've come to the right place and I'm gonna show you how I go about it now so I start by making I normally actually the way I'm doing it is a little bit different to normal because I've already got the faces drawn. I'd normally draw the hair as well as the face, but today we're drawing the hair on top of everything else. So I'm actually going to turn down the opacity of all the faces that I painted already, just so we can see a bit easier when I draw the hair over them. So what I like to do is I like to get an acrylic brush with the density down really low. If you don't have something that says acrylic, you should have something that says brush in Paint Tool Sci. So I put the density really low, I think 33 will do the trick. Yeah, that looks fine. So I'll put it at about 33. I might even make the brush a bit smaller than this. But the size of the brush don't go by what I'm doing, because you might have a different canvas size to me. In case you were wondering, the size of the canvas I'm using is 1920 by 1080 currently. So that's in pixels at 300 DPI, just in case you were wondering. So, I'm gonna probably get like a brown color to sketch the hair out. So what I like to do is I first kind of figure out where the parting is gonna be. So I kind of want her parting to be here. I want to give the hair a little bit of volume as it falls down. The good thing about drawing hair is you can make it as chicken scratchy and rough as you want. Although I still try and keep it relatively neat. I might actually go and put the density even lower than this at about 16. As I get to the end of the hair, you'll notice I kind of curve a little bit because even if someone has naturally straight hair, it's very unlikely that it will be completely dead straight. So I like to add a tiny bit of a wave to the ends of the hair. I also notice a lot of beginners tend to draw every single strand of hair like this. You really do not need to do that. You, at the moment, like imagine basically imagine the hair as a form what are the shapes that make up the hair we're really trying to simplify it if that makes sense so I want one chunk of hair to fall down like that but I want this bit to be tucked behind her ear so I'll draw that bit tucked behind like this then we'll have another piece hanging down we might have that fall over her eye a little bit and make sure you give the hair kind of a little bit of volume at the top because it's very unlikely that someone's hair would be completely and utterly flat to their head unless they've really like sleeked it down with hair gel or something so that is essentially even though I did it really rough that is how you would go about drawing really straight hair naturally kind of straight hair I'm then gonna go into the next face and I want to give this character more naturally curly hair. Okay, so this time around I'm actually using a reference image, which definitely helps when drawing hair if you want to draw like a certain kind of hairstyle or hair type. So in the reference image, it looks like she's kind of, I don't know, use something to like gel her hair quite close to her head. <laughs> I don't know what. Um, the word I'm looking for is and the girl in the reference image that I'm using has really lovely like naturally curly hair so to try and capture that in this basic sketching stage I kind of just use lots of curving motions <laughs> sort of like curling um, 
imagine little curls and just kind of loosely sketch little tiny waves like that but obviously with curly hair it's not going to be all, all perfectly in one shape so you'll have some bits hanging out my hair is actually naturally very curly but the difference is i straighten my hair every single day it's really bad though it's made it like really damaged but not this isn't the case for everyone with curly hair but i know for certain mine can get quite frizzy or if i do tie up in a little bun like this girl has it it would have certain bits sticking out of it and now finally i'm gonna move on to the last character so i think i'm probably gonna use print pinterest again for some kind of reference image this time i'm drawing someone who has wavy hair i'm kind of imagining that they must have used like curlers with like a really large barrel that give like those big kind of soft waves actually using a photo of Jessica Alba as reference so like I said really roughly just marking out the basic shape of this not worrying too much about any kind of details yet um, because my art style is sort of kind of cartoony I would say like semi realism I do like to sometimes go back in and emphasize certain parts so if something is curling out off color out even further just adding a bit more volume to it because this is definitely a very glamorous looking kind of hairstyle so I want to add to that kind of glamour element especially because this character I, I already drew with kind of like a red lip I think it's also worth noting that um, I really did try and make every single face of these characters quite different as well just to show that I can do kind of different versatile characters if that makes sense <laughs> okay so once you have the hair sketched out you now need to put in the basic block color of the hair so the first character I'm gonna give her blonde hair so I'm gonna set a hair layer that I just did the little sketch to multiply using the acrylic brush but at a higher density this time around I'm gonna start painting in blonde now with blonde hair a lot of people tend to just get a yellow and put the yellow down but yellow is kind of way too saturated like a pure yellow is way too saturated for blonde hair what I tend to do to make a kind of blonde look is I'll push the color wheel more towards orange go to a light kind of desaturated orange really desaturated kind of like that maybe push it a little bit more towards the yellow add a little bit more saturation and a color like this is way more way more natural looking for blonde hair I find you'll see as we go on to actually paint in the hair as well the difference that it makes so literally all you need to do at this stage is paint in the block color for the hair okay so now that you've done your block layer of color you're gonna add a layer above that so a layer between the multiply of the sketch and the block of the color. So in between this layer goes clipping layer. So you need to click the check mark on clipping group to actually activate the clipping group. And this will make sure that when you draw, it won't draw outside what is underneath it, which is incredibly useful, of course, especially when it comes to doing the hair, because we're gonna turn this into a multiply layer turn down the opacity to about 50%. You can just colour pick the base colour underneath and use that to shade, but I tend to find, especially for blonde hair at least, it won't be dark enough. So I'm just going to darken this a little bit, maybe make it a bit warmer as well. And I'll use this to shade instead. Once again, just being quite blocky with this. So now that 
that you've got the basic shading in, in a layer above, what I like to do is then go in and add sort of like more localized shading. So places that are going to be specifically darker. Make sure to make this another clipping group. So places like behind the back of the neck are going to be a bit darker. Obviously don't put this on 100%. I'd say put this on about 40%. Actually maybe a bit more than that. About 60%. So this will help add a lot more depth and dimension, just kind of adding in this localised shading. Obviously at the roots it tends to be darker as well. And then once you are done with this more localised shading, the very last step we're going to do in this part of the process is make one more clipping group, but this time for a luminosity layer. And this time we are actually going to colour pick the base colour and use that over the top and I kind of make wait, lines like this kind of think about how they do it in anime and do that kind of sort of <laughs> that sort of look and turn down the opacity of that to about 34% now the other option you have at this point is also if you wanted to do like an ombre or a grown out root kind of effect so for example this character maybe her roots have grown out and i can do that as in like a multiply layer turning on clipping group something like that obviously this is gonna look quite bad right now because we're nowhere near done but yeah if you wanted to show that the roots have grown out a little bit you can do that on a multiply layer above that's always an option so if the characters dyed their hair obviously or you can change it to a luminosity again and this time around I want to make this character have more of an ombre obviously right now it looks rather gingery I want to make it look like more of a blonde so we can do that by changing the hue changing the saturation as well that looks quite cool if we give her an ombre like that there we go so you've got all the basic stuff down for the hair now what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge all of these layers together all the multiply layers that were shading it and the luminosity layer that was adding shine to it and also that final layer I did to give this character an ombre okay so the next step, which is kind of where the magic happens, we're going to get the acrylic tool again. Again, if you don't have this acrylic tool, just right click, make a new brush. It, if you click, right click here, it should come up with an option for brush. And you can rename it to acrylic. Because I think that's how I, I got my acrylic one, but I'm not sure if that's one that came with Sai. Literally, all you do is right click, create new brush, because it's basically just the brush tool and Sai that I'm using. So, what you want to do is up the blending a little bit, turn the density down to about 85, and have blending at about 30. And if I, a lot of this is about colour picking. The way you colour pick in Paint Tool Sai is by holding down Alt and then pressing down. So if I alt and colour pick the darkest shade, I can start blending this out. And because we've got this on such a high density with slight blending as well, it really does create the effect of hair quite well, I think. So I like to start by blending out my darkest tones first. Oh, I've completely forgotten to merge your multiply layer with your line art down. You want to merge your line art into this the line art sketch so if you don't know what I mean by that make sure you merge down the sketch we made in the beginning onto this layer so that we can paint away the sketch so literally all I'm doing right now is getting the darkest tones and blending them out and I use sort of like long motions to blend these bits out Sort of long sweeping motions and every time you hear this sound it's me hitting down alt and color picking a new color as for the darkest areas behind 
the back of the neck. I'm going to colour pick a sort of medium kind of blonde colour and paint back in some streaks into those areas because even though they're dark, you'd still see some strands of hair coming through. So I'm going to speed up this process but now that I've kind of explained what I'm doing, hopefully you can still follow along. Really all I'm doing is just blending out all the basic things we've left already because as you can see right now everything has sort of sharp edges and it doesn't look like natural hair at all. Okay, so now that we've blended out absolutely everything, uh, what I like to do now is lately I've been adding line art kind of back over my art which I used to just kind of leave it all painterly like this. Once I've got all the basic shading done, I will then go in, colour pick one of the darkest colours, and I'll use this for the multiply layer above, which is the line art layer. I'll put this layer at about, I don't know, 88, 90% around that kind of area. Keep it on a low density. And I like to keep the brush relatively small as well. I'll keep it at probably around five for this kind of size painting. But once again, it completely depends on your canvas size and what, what looks best. So when I'm going back in and adding, or well, I'll say quote unquote line art, I'm being quite selective in where I put it. So I don't really tend to put it over any highlights. Just kind of use it in the corners. I might even turn the density down even further. Okay, so now we've finished the line art that will go over the top of everything, just to redefine any areas that have lost any kind of definition. And I'm just kind of toggling that layer on and off just to show you the difference that that made. Um, this is why I've started doing this now. I just kind of like how it looks when you add back in the line art. I think everything looks a bit crisper and sharper. Okay, so now for my absolute favourite part of drawing hair. I like to make a luminosity layer above everything, choose an airbrush, and this is the thing that might get a little bit difficult because I don't know if you guys will be able to find the brush that I use. I use this brush called Jizzy. It's spelt J-I-Z-Y. And also sometimes I use Gridgy, but I don't know where I got them from. However, if I can't find either of them online, I will probably link down below I'll probably put my versions of them up for download or something like that because well probably just the jizzy one that's literally the brush I use for all my highlights and stuff I don't know why it's called that though but it just kind of makes me laugh every time I se select it anyway make sure you have this set to luminosity make sure you up the opacity of jizzy and this is in the texture section so that is the texture of the brush and that kind of gives it like this kind of glittery look my usual so chips um smoked chicken huh smoked chicken yeah and chicken chow mein so share the smoked chicken with the kia right yep chips and chicken chow mein. yeah thank you so it adds kind of like a glittery look to it I just really like this texture to use. So, what I will tend to do is make this quite small. I'm gonna, well, not that small because you can't even see it. A bit bigger than that. Maybe size six. Six looks alright. I'll put the density at about 50%. And you basically use this just to paint in strands of hair. And the fact that this is textured, I feel like it makes the hair look more real in a way because hair does have that kind of look to it I don't know how to describe it 
because it's quite like a gritty texture but like this I don't know it's just I like how it looks because it's sparkly and kind of magical and a lot of what I draw is kind of fantasy based so when I add this to my characters I, I like how it looks a little bit magical I like to focus this on areas where it's shiny but I'm kind of using this as if they were just strands running through the hair. Like this. So I have this on a luminosity layer but set to kind of a yellow colour. Okay, so if I go and toggle this on and off, you'll see the difference that that's made. It's kind of add, added more texture into the hair and just made it look a little bit better. Really you can add as much of this as you like, I would say just kind of judge by eye how much you think you'll need. So for this next character I think it will be a bit harder because she's got such dark hair. Some people have like dark hair and it has different kind of colour reflections, like someone might have dyed their hair black but there's like those kind of hair dyes where you have black hair but in the light the shiny parts look blue. But I don't want to give this character that kind of look. If I if I colour pick this colour, nah this isn't bright enough. There we go. So I'm going to use this kind of shade, kind of light pinkish to highlight with this one. I'm using a light pinkish kind of colour, maybe dragging it a bit towards purple. And I'm going to use that to highlight the hair on this one. Okay, so I'm just going to toggle that on and off again, just to show you the difference that that made to the hair. And there we go, that just about finishes how I do my hair. I just want to show you once again, hang on, I'll show you the difference with and without the line art and the glittery hair texture. So this is without the line art and the glittery hair texture. And this is with them so as you can see it makes quite a big difference to your finished picture so what I'm gonna do now is just add little loose flyaway bits of hair so probably low density of about 36 color pick a mid-tone from the hair I'm gonna use press on alt to do this what you do I'd actually say probably put the density even lower than this what you're gonna do is just kind of add sort of like flyaway hairs because even if your hair is really straight you're still gonna have a few flyaways coming out and this just helps the hair look even more like hair and there we go we've added some loose flyaways and now this picture is basically finally finished and I've finished painting all the hair so hopefully you guys found this tutorial to be helpful in some way I really wanted I know a lot of people requested to show how I paint hair so I really hope this helped you and make sure you let me know if there's any other tutorials you want me to do on different parts of drawing people because really that's my only specialty and yeah anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll see you again very soon bye guys